Welcome to the Pest Web Podcast, where we talk about the products and strategies pest control professionals are using to earn customers and grow. Each episode, we sit down with industry experts to bring you business tips, market trends, and technical information you can use. It's a fresh perspective on what it takes to succeed in pest control. This episode is made possible with sponsorship from IntuCare. Looking for more out of your backyard mosquito treatment? The IntuCare Mosquito Trap is a revolutionary innovation that effectively attracts and kills Aedes mosquitoes at both the larva and adult stage. Its unique technology and novel ingredients make the IntuCare Mosquito Trap an essential and environmentally friendly backyard mosquito control solution. On this podcast, we're talking with Ted Worcester of IntuCare. Ted handles sales and marketing for IntuCare in the United States. Before IntuCare, Ted worked with us for 34 years when we were part of Univar in a variety of positions managing sales, marketing, and regulations. He has a bachelor's degree in agricultural biology with a focus on pest management from Cal Poly. He's also worked as a technician in both pest management and vector control and as a state weed control specialist. Good afternoon. Good morning. Uh, the into care is a trap in the sense that the eggs laid in it never leave because the larvae become affected by the insect growth regulator. But I know it's also more than a trap. Will you explain how? Yeah, it's a the trap. Is kind of like you had indicated. Traps uh, maybe kind of mis misnamed a little bit because it doesn't trap any adults. In fact, we want the adults, the female gravid adults. To leave the trap because after she lays the eggs, uh, we want her to disseminate uh, the pyroprox and the growth regular that works in very small amounts uh, around the uh, the other breeding sites. So it's not a trap in the sense that uh, it keeps the adults there, but it is a trap, like you said. It, it keeps the leg the eggs from uh, becoming uh, adults by a couple of first stage larvae. Because it's a two part trap. You have an adult side, which is this fungus that's on this floating gauze piece. And then you have the larvicide, which is an IGR that is added to the water, correct? Correct. Well, it's added to the water, but it's also on the, uh, the surface that she lands. And the inside of the trap is very smooth except for the floating surface. So the, uh, you have both the adulticide, uh, a fungus, a naturally occurring fungus, a soil fungus that uh, is fairly, fairly species-specific. And then you also have a powder of uh, the pyroproxen on the... Um, on, on the floater itself that she'll land on and, and then she gets affected and, 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 and we've kind of figured out a way to get enough of the, the adult side on to kill her in eight to ten days and then uh, enough also pyroproxen on there that she can now carry enough to go to those other breeding sites by the, uh, the patented uh, uh, gauze that we use inside uh, the, the unit. So we're essentially using her to uh, spread it all over uh, uh, the yard, all the places that you really can't get to and it, the yard and surrounding areas. Yeah, because that's something that is particular to the 80s mosquito is she doesn't just lay all her eggs in one spot. She lays a few here, lays a few there. And, you know, considering it's container breeding, it's hard to figure out where all those spots might be, you know, as far as it's up in the gutter, it's in this bird bath over here. And it could be a small, you know, upside down cap of, you know, soda. So that's why it's an auto dissemination, you know, slash trap, because we're, you're using her to, you know, contaminate all those breeding sites that you're not going to be able to find on your own for the future eggs, the other legs that she, that she is laying. That's correct. Yeah, it is. And we've seen some very, very good success in the unit itself. We kill 100 percent. There's never, never had an adult come from the, you know, from the breeding site, a, a developing larvae become an adult from the breeding site. So we've been 100 percent on that. And we get a 90 plus percent in most of the surrounding areas of uh, uh, the, the um, larvae that, that can't become adults in the surrounding areas and all those areas that you can't get to. And there's a whole lot of them on there that are that are hard to find. Do the active ingredients affect non-target organisms? Uh, no. Um, in fact, uh, for, for a couple of reasons. One is it's in a kind of a cryptic kind of, a, you put, you're putting it in shade. It's a black cryptic kind of container. So really 
the only things, that, the only insects that really go in there are uh, mosquitoes. Now, you know, candidly, we found a couple of frogs and it doesn't affect them. And we've had, we've had a snake in one of them uh, in the Southeast, but really it's for the one, the container is one of the reasons that it doesn't affect other insects. The other, the other reason is that, uh, um, the, the, the Bavaria, especially the fungus is fairly specific to certain types of insects, flying insects and mosquitoes being one of them. So you're using a very small amount in a very point source location that's very uh, that's that's attractive to really only only a couple of types of mosquitoes. So we haven't had any issues with honeybees or or, or lace wings or or even um, in, in, in all, any other insect that we we've uh, we've looked at. Um, we've in, in even some of the active ingredient on there. We've been testing in other insects just in case, like bumblebees and things like this. And fed, yeah a sucrose-based solution with the pyroproxamine, there's no effect on them. So it's very specific to the 80s mosquito and, and to some degree the Culex mosquito, but it's, it's targeted and, light and registered and the label calls for 80s mosquitoes to be present uh, to use it. Yeah, so it's two levels basically of not having to worry about non-target organisms because both of those actives are, are pretty um, targeted towards... Um, um, the specific pest, like I know the Bavaria has been used in ag a lot. It's also used in lawn and ornamental right. and the pyroxylvin. I know that you could, it's very, it's effective in very low doses. And I think, um, as far as the who's concerned, WHO, you know, they allow it to be used in drinking water in certain areas where the mosquitoes contaminate drinking water or not contaminate, but breed in drinking water. So I think that helps. And then on top of that, you have the behavior of, you know, besides the active ingredients being targeted, the behavior of wanting to be in this bucket in the first place um, is a second level of not having to worry about non-target organisms. Exactly. Exactly. So we, we're, we've got a good, great safety record and we've got literature that uh, if, you know, if, if when called for that discusses, you know, uh, the safety on bees, the safety around schools, the safety, you know, so all the safety features uh, that can be uh, passed on, uh, explaining, you know, the uh, besides the LD50, both both being way over 5,000 milligrams per kilogram, uh, the, the other safety features that the, the unit has. So when a PMP decides to get started with IntuCare, how how many should they figure to place on a property? Like, what's the what's the average amount of IntuCares that you have to have on on a property? If it's not an acre, you know, if it's a smaller residential, right. but I'm sure you get into like, you know, hospitals and hotels that have more acreage. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, uh, the first with the smaller uh, houses, um, first of all, it's just the, the general, the label says 10 to 15 units per acre. Well, what does that mean? That means about, usually about two per house, sometimes three, depending on the, the, the population and, and the, the conducive conditions in, in the yard and around the yard could, could call as many as three, but generally it's about two units per, per, per house. Um, we've, we've done, um, and, and you can, and like I said, the label says 10 to 15, but we've done work where we've used probably as little as six per acre in a large area where we're able to grid it and really kind of plan out because one of the things you've got to consider is even in a small yard or, or a large facility, you can't count the building, don't count the building because it don't breed inside the building generally. So you take that off the, the property, and then you're, you're now you're recalculating it at 10 to 15 per acre, and it usually comes out to about two per yard on a typical yard. So it's pretty pretty uh, pretty low, and it's pretty effective even even with two per yard. But occasionally, even on a smaller yard, I've recommended three, the higher rate, because of the conducive conditions around the yard that the uh, breeding sites that uh, that are outside of the yard. And where should they be placed? Because I know they're just not supposed to be placed in, an, in a grid out in the open. It, it also depends on the best areas to place them as well and how many of those are available. Right. Uh, the, the, the one thing that you really have to keep in mind when you, when you place these out is they've got to be out of the sun 100% of the time. They need to be under shades, under a deck, something like this. So you want to kind of get them, uh, in my recommendation on several homes, is generally the folks are in the backyard, occasionally some, some front yard activity, but generally it's in the backyard. So what I've recommended is put one, you know, if there's a deck that you can put it or fairly close to the house because the 80s mosquito, especially 80s, has been, been kind of adapted through the years to live in and around our homes or around our homes. It's adapted to us. 
So they're going to stick close to the structures to some degree when they can, but you've got to get in bushes or a deck or something like that. So I, always, I recommend one close, closer to the house, closer to, if you will, the, the breeding source and the blood meal that the mosquito is going to be hanging around waiting for. Putting one, they don't attract mosquitoes necessarily after until after they've, they've, they've had a meal. So they're not going to be attracted to bring them to the meal. But after they're going to be put the, the mosquito, the female mosquito is going to look to lay her eggs. And that's, that's where I put one of them. The other one I put, I, I said, okay, now take it a little further out in the yard. Look at uh, where there, there's the green, the shade. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, you get around the air conditioner, whatever, but you've got, it's, it's kind of an art form. You kind of look where you think the mosquitoes are coming from or most likely to come from. It could be right up against the fence towards one side of the yard or where the neighbors next door have a whole bunch of green and, and they could be breeding there too. So you kind of put one in that part of the yard. So I usually, if you're doing two, that's kind of how I place them, but you've got to keep them out of the sun because one of the active ingredients, both the active ingredients are, are relatively heat sensitive. They're, they're black traps. So if you put them in the sun, even with the water in there, it's going to get uh, a little warm in that trap. Okay, so it has to do with basically keeping them effective with the active ingredients. Exactly. The the active ingredients on the, the two of them that we'd mentioned, uh, one is a the pyroproxim that works in very low doses. It has a melting temperature of about 108 degrees. So if it gets close to that 108 it starts getting sticky. And the whole purpose of the unit is you want that pyroproxin, the mosquito, to, that female mosquito, to get the pyroproxin on it. And if the, the dust is sticky, it won't jump from the net to the mosquito. So you've got to make sure that the net is dusty. It comes out of the package dusty. And you want to keep it in an area where it's not going to get too hot or even travel with the sachets before you implement them. You've got to travel and make sure they're kept cool so that uh, that dust stays nice and, and powdery. And then the other thing is, you've also got the active, the other second is, is Bavaria bassiana. It's a living organism. So in that case, that also has a life that's accelerated in heat. So if it gets too hot, like any living organism, it'll kill it. But if it gets warmer, like 100 degrees, 95, 100, 105 degrees, you're going to accelerate the, the, the spores to, 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 to go through the life cycle much quicker. And you won't get that several week uh, control that you would normally get with the pyroproximin and, and the uh, the very of the two active ingredients. So, so yes, it has it's completely around the active ingredient and taking care of the active ingredient to give you the the efficacy that we're seeing in many places now. Okay. And are there situations where they needed to be secured? Uh, most what a uh, very few uh, situations. If you've got a curious dog or and in, in once in a while, we'll have a curious raccoon, but once the raccoon looks at it once, they, get, they, they understand what it is and don't mess with it. But if you have to secure it, um, we have a, a securing wire that, that the station can pop by squeezing the wire. You can pop the station on and off to, to, uh, to, main, to maintain it on there, or, and, and then that wire can be put on a... Uh, um, you can use a stake. There's a, there's a stake that's, that I've, I've found in the fencing department of Lowe's that works really, really well that you can stake on the ground. It's a nine-inch stake. Or you can go to a patio block that, that I've seen at Home Depot. They're $1.30 or so each. You can glue it to that if you need that. Keep in mind, this has got over a gallon of water in it. It's got five liters or so of water. So it's going to weigh about 12 pounds plus the weight of the trap. So you probably have 12, 13 pounds sitting there in a fair stable, flat uh, bottom uh, uh, container that's kind of hard to move or knock over. So you really kind of have to have an animal or something try and get into it. And even if they do, the uh, as we said earlier, the, the, the active ingredients naturally occur in once approved for drinking water. So even if a raccoon or a dog gets in there and, and uh, um, you know, gets into the water, that's, uh, we haven't uh, ha ever had an issue. The one issue we did have the securing is we did have a dog able to get the net out and ate the net. And I talked to the vet, and the vet gave me a call, and, and, and I said, well, the active ingredients aren't going to hurt the dog, but you're going to have to make sure that net passes through the dog, which it did. But that was the okay. issue we were even worried about with a, with a non-target. Okay, so that's a good point that when this thing's full of water, it's going to be pretty heavy, and most likely it's in a protected, shady area to begin with, so you don't have to worry about it being knocked over by normal winds and stuff. It's mainly these larger animals that are curious. Yeah. yeah the only, the only different, the only uh, caveat I would say to that 
is that if the water in a very dry area like in Arizona or something like that, we have a drier climate, um, you need to check the water every couple of weeks or so just because uh, the water can get, get pretty low and it will lighten up the trap uh, on that. So it could blow over from wind or something like that. And if there's water and if it completely dries out after a few weeks, and we rarely, rarely see that, if there's no water in there, then you're not going to get the, the female mosquitoes going in there. So your traps can lose its effectiveness unless it happens to want to rest them for some reason, some other reason. But if you put water back in there, lift the floater, put the water back in there to raise it back up, the, the water that, that you put in there is just as effective as if you just made it, just changed the trap right there because you have so much pyroproxivin in that water, something in the order of 2,000 times more pyroproxivin in that water then you're going to need to kill 100% of the larvae. So reconstituting with water if it dries up, and then it's just as effective as it's almost as effective as when you first put it in there. Uh, you know, the gauze will will, uh, will have a life for about four to six weeks, but um, the water itself is is going to kill 100% of those. Uh, keep 100% of that larvae from becoming adults. How long does it take before customers start to notice a decrease in mosquito bites once these things are installed? It, um, and there's, there's uh, really about two to two and a half weeks is what we're generally seeing. The customer will start seeing a, a noticeable drop in the population. So by the end of the first month, three weeks or so, they're, they're, the customers are saying, or, or a lot of most of the customers are saying, okay, I've got a substantial drop. I'm able to go out. I've only seen a couple of mosquitoes. Nothing gets rid of 100%. But I've only seen a couple of mosquitoes. And they're very happy because now they can go out there with almost no mosquitoes hanging around there. So, you know, generally about two to three, uh, two to three weeks, you're going to see some, some pretty good results. The one thing that we, that, uh, that I'd recommend is that if you're going in the middle of the season, in other words, the customer's calling you says, I have mosquitoes, please come and take care of them. We do recommend a supplemental spray. In other words, the first time do a barrier misting treatment, with a good uh, a micro cap uh, um, erythroid or whatever you whatever you're using, um, or bifenthrin or something, whatever, go ahead and do a treatment on there that'll knock down that population and where they're resting along the, uh, the perimeter on there and give the unit a chance to start working on there. So as the population starts building up, those females are going to the unit and you're affecting that generation plus the, the next generation at that point. If you can catch it. Before, if you've got a customer that is going to sign up for mosquito work, before the mosquitoes actually start showing up, then in most cases you can just put the intu care out on there with when they do the spraying because you're now catching the population as it's going up, and, and it'll give it that one, that two for two weeks or so time to control and keep that population down to a minimum, as opposed to having a spike before you have to go in. So it, it's not going to kill 100 percent of. 80s mosquitoes and I think because there's usually a difference between when they're blood feeding and when they're egg laying and when they're attracted to this kind of environment um, and and I, and I and as well I guess what about other mosquitoes I think sometimes we need to talk to the customers and explain you know this this targets this specific 80s mosquito and we probably won't be able to get it down to 100 percent it's going to be a, a huge change though but also explain you know does this trap work for other mosquitoes as well uh, yeah, and to, to reemphasize, we've gotten the population of 80s down to very, very low to where they've only seen a couple of them at best. In some cases, they say they haven't seen any, but I know there's something out there. Um, but um, the, the, uh, the other mosquitoes, the other Culex and things like that, they usually like a little dirtier water, but they will breed in a lot of cases in the same basic locations as the, the 80s mosquito. So the way it works is the 80s will, will, will uh, go into the unit and then the 80s will go out to, to breed in other sites. And a lot of times you have Culex breeding in those other sites. So you will control the Culex or any Culex that comes and lays eggs into the trap will be 100% controlled. Why we don't have Culex on the label yet is that uh, Culex usually will drop their eggs all in one. So they don't skip over, they don't put their eggs in many different places. So you'll see a slower reduction on the Culex, but it will, uh, several species of Culex, but it will start controlling Culex species too. They'll see a drop in that. But again, for you to use it, you have to have 80s present because the label requires 80s uh, mosquitoes, uh, 80s albopictus and 80s aldegypti um, 
to be able to use it, but we've seen some nice reduction in the QLEX. In fact, we've just had a study um, that we just completed. Uh, actually, we uh, was completed by, in Florida by uh, the Mosquito Bay District, and they've seen a nice reduction in QLEX. So we're going to reapproach EPA and ask if we can put QLEX in the label, but that won't be this season. At, at best, it'll be next season to have QLEX on there also. But right now, you have to have 80s. And you will see some reduction of other mosquitoes too. So, but I wouldn't completely uh, count on this for, for reduction of Culex at this point. Okay, well, that's great news though. No, so we're real hopeful that, uh, that we can get this done uh, fairly quickly. But yeah, EPA moves at the speed of EPA. Yes. <laughs> How often does each trap need to be serviced? The, the label calls for every four weeks. Um, in, in, the, in the Caribbean, the, the label is a little more liberal. It says every six, and we have it works well for six weeks in the Caribbean. So uh, the, the, uh, they can serve every six. But the label, the EPA, uh, pending further data that uh, we'll, we'll be submitting to them, uh, says every four weeks or so. So it kind of fits in the monthly cycle and mosquito season. And that, uh, that seems to work out pretty well. But uh, um, we, fibroproxivin lasts a lot longer there, especially if it's kept uh, from getting hot last a lot longer there but the Bavaria after about four weeks it starts going down in efficacy four five six weeks seven weeks it starts going down in efficacy you're still getting that you know that kill of the mosquito in eight to ten days or so because you want to kill her slowly as she's laying her eggs and spreading the pyrotoxin and the Bavaria that fungus is still doing that but um, it, uh, it it does have a, a, a shorter life the pyrotoxin does. so the label says four okay. weeks so it's dependent on the life cycle of the Bavaria and where it's at to where it's producing spores to get picked up by the mosquito? Yeah, the, the spores doesn't produce the spores. It has the spores there. Um, but yeah, okay. the, the spores have a, like I said, it's a living organism. So it has a life cycle. Um, we've, you know, we've seen, depending on the situation, as long as eight weeks and the Bavaria has been, been very effective. But in, in most cases, it's going to be less than eight weeks, probably closer to four four to six weeks. We're, we're, we're looking to get a little bit more time on the label, but we have to submit the EPA. Okay. So considering that you were, we're dealing with the fungus and its life cycle, you were mentioning this a little bit before, that there is a special way to handle the refills? Uh, yes. Um, the refills, that's the, the one thing that, that, that you have to be very careful on is um, the refills can't be in heat of over 100 degrees, really 108 is, like I said, the melting point on there. But really, you need to keep it under 100 degrees, whether you're handling it before you put it in the unit, as in the sachet, they come in sachets with two yeast tablets and the net that has the dust all over it and a little bit extra dust to put in the water you change it out. So that has to be kept under 100 degrees when you're, you're traveling. Oh, so you'll need to put it in some kind of cooler. Um, I use a little uh, thermos cooler. And, uh, and it lasts all day for me, and it keeps it keeps it fine. Some people use the, the cooler, and they put a you know an ice uh, one of those, uh, those ice uh, freeze packs on it, and they they uh, they can keep it there in, in the truck because the trucks trucks can get 120 plus degrees pretty easy, and you'll need to keep those sachets uh, there. Now, if it's when it's shipped, um, as far as storage before it goes out in the truck or out in the uh, the field. Uh, you can keep this in an air-conditioned office of 72 or something like that. It's going to last over six months because the Bavaria is still, still, uh, is still very viable at, at that time period. If you put it in the refrigerator, and just a standard refrigerator, um, then it'll last over two years. We've even had you know, folks say, well, I, I, if mine froze, is there going to be any issue? No, no issue whatsoever. So you just have to worry mostly about when it gets exposed to heat and how it accelerates things. Exactly. Exactly, and, and it could make accelerate the Bavaria's life cycle and make the pyroproxifen sticky. And, and it's important when, even when they're applying it in the trap, there's a good way of checking that to make sure they're you know most stuff comes out without without a problem. But there's a good way of checking that when you pull the gauze out of the package, you need to see just like baby powder, you need to see a little puff of dust, and that dust needs to be dust as you put it in the water. If it comes to it looks like little crystals. Or if you don't see the dust, the, the gauze may, it's a black gauze, but it may appear white like the dust is on it. But if that dust doesn't, a little bit of dust doesn't fall off that gauze, then you, you probably have something that's kind of a little bit warm. And you want to come back to, uh, to, to Verceris or to uh, Intucare and say, I've got some warm sachets, what, what can we do? 
because you don't want to use the warm sachets. We'd rather you not use them at all. What happens if the floater gets wet while they're applying it? Because I know you have to be very careful in how you sit it on the water, but what happens if it kind of gets dunked in the water? Is it, will it dry out and be usable or is it pretty much not usable at that point? At that point, if it gets completely wet, it's, it's not usable. We have, that's really rare to have it completely wet. We've had sprinklers spraying sideways that uh, they put right next to a sprinkler. They didn't know the sprinkler was there. So it just actually saturated first time out. Uh, vertical water, rain, uh, you can wash, you have, uh, you know, rain over and over and over, and you still have 2,000 times more pyroproximin than still 100% of the larvae. So the vertical rain, you know, vertical water like rain is not an issue. Side water uh, can be. So when it does get wet, and what you want to do is you'll, you'll, you'll put your container where you want it, uh, put the water in, and then don't move it after you put the water in and you put the gauze in after that, after put the water in, put the gauze on, and it'll float really nice right above that water line, and then cap on. Don't move it after you put the, the floater and the gauze in, because then you slosh the water in. And what happens is you'll get a little bit of water sloshing on one part of the gauze, and that'll have a little bit of a wicking effect. It's not much, but a little bit of a wicking effect, but those, those floaters are sensitive to, so, to float just exactly where we want them to, to optimize the mosquito picking up the, uh, the active ingredients. So when one side gets a little bit wet, you'll get a little bit of a, it, it'll kind of look like a, a, a ship that's tilted on there be, uh, to the wet side because of the weight. Uh, now, if there's a little bit on there, you're still going to get really good control on there if it's just a little bit wet. But I've seen where it looks like the entire half of a gauze, it looks like you know, the, half, the Titanic halfway down uh, the picture you see, the picture of the Titanic going down, it looks yeah. like that, and that's where... You want to make sure that you you take the gauze out and, and redo it and redo the floater and not move it after that. What's the average cost per unit in and how much should a PMP charge for the service? And, and I ask you this question because I know it's a question that you get asked a lot um, by PMC PMPs themselves. So I don't know if you mind answering that question. Yeah, I, and, and I can address, too, a little bit. Uh, we don't sell this to, to homeowners. This is not for resale. This only goes through Verceris to uh, professional press, con, press management people and, and uh, government people. So um, the cost, uh, I believe, uh, $15 per unit station uh, per, per trap, and they come in 25 uh, unit boxes, and I believe they're charging uh, $7 uh, per sachet. And we've just recently started packing the sachets in 25 unit back on there. We had EPA approval to change our packaging, but I think uh, most people who are on this are buying the 100 unit bags because anyway, they go through them fairly quickly. So that's the cost for it uh, to, to set it up. And it's usually typically about two per yard. What has been charged, and I'm careful on this, but, but what's been charged, what I've seen is across the country, really kind of depends on is it a current customer or are you going out there for something else etc just like any other add-on service that you have or is it a new customer that just wants mosquitoes so i've seen a high of 190 dollars 90 to 95 dollars per station in fact i saw 100 just the other day per station two stations in the yard for a customer that, that just mosquito control and only wants during the season so it's not a typical normal customer and i've seen it as low as you know, 35 or 40 dollars a unit uh, on a, um, uh, depending, it depends on the part of the country you're on too and, and the mosquito pressure but I've seen $35, $40 a unit for uh, someone who is a current customer that's doing also other pest control services, ant, rodent you know, flea, whatever and you're going out there anyway and uh, um, for, for uh, the unit during season, season long control and then a couple a lot of PMPs are saying we'll con contract for you and we'll just keep them out there year long depending where you're at and that way you want to get ahead of the season when the season does come around they've already got the units out there and prepared and, and going, and going. Um, but then they can charge less uh, you know if they're charged a monthly uh, 12 months a year versus you know five to eight months a year for season uh, for mosquito control uh, mosquito yeah so it really depends on how often you're already there or, or not already there and how often you want to go out Exactly. So it's really about phys how, how, how physically present are you going to be, or this, be there to, to service those units? Yeah, yeah. And, and to service them only takes about, you know, you, you get in there, you kind of clean out the water, and you can, and the label says you can dump the water right on the ground right there. 
but I always used to leave a little bit of the, the old water in there because I think it's still got some attractiveness to it and then refill it with water and, and put the, the, uh, put the, put a new gauze on there, put the lid on. It takes about three to four minutes at most to, to service. So it's pretty quick to get in and out there. So it's not much time, um, added on to, especially if you're already out there doing spraying and some other stuff, you know, road, road and exclusion or whatever, um, doesn't add much time to your service call at all. So the, the into care is unique, I think, because it fills in a niche created by 80s mosquitoes. And I know that at some point, you, you know, Culex might be added to it, but, but 80s in particular, they're active during the day and they container breed in urban areas. Like you said, they're, they're pretty adapted to be near humans. They're not necessarily breeding out in the wetlands and coming to our homes. They're, they're feeding and eating pretty close to us. Um, and vector control usually provides treatment late in the day and often not on private property. They don't, you know, tend to want to be noticed. Um, and, and would you agree with that statement that as far as PMPs go, that's this, this product kind of fills a niche that vector control can't necessarily deal with a hundred percent on their own. Exactly. In fact, some, some, uh, vector control, uh, districts are passing or suggesting that they go to the pest control offer, not just for into care, but for, for private control because in some cases they can't go on their yard or won't uh, for whatever reason so um, they're they're passing that on so this does fill it fill a nice niche it's a, it's a greener solution um, it's using very little product like like we explained the safety of the products uh, on there so um, not it's good for the beneficials things like this so we, we do have a couple of uh, mosquito abatement districts or so that are buying and using these though so they're using it where the areas where they do want some smaller, some more targeted control where they can't take their helicopter or their, their fogging trucks and things like this or don't want to use those. So we are making um, some sales uh, in certain parts of the country from, uh, from the abatement districts, and, and we're real proud of that because they're the experts. They've been in this, what they do for a living, and, and they've got budgets, and trucks, and everything else set up to do just what they do, but they're looking using some uh, into carry uh, units also. Yeah, I think some of the places where I've seen them using it are in the county parks or fairgrounds, things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, so it's, well, it's great for the PMPs to be able to take care of things that vector control can't, can't handle. This is a product that vector control is using as well, just in the areas where they're, you know, more commonly dealing with as, as opposed to our the PMPs. Yeah. And, so and in residential, sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. I'm, 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 go ahead. And I want you to add to whatever you know about how Vector Control is using it. Well, they're using it in, tar like you said, in places like that, and they're using it um, in areas where they can't get a truck or they're getting pushback from the fogging trucks, things like this. That's where they're going to be using it. In one case, they did a study out in uh, Florida where they had, you know, they were doing their normal spraying in one area, and they did these in another. And it was a pretty good size area or something like that. And the, uh, the residents in the, in the area that was using the into care control says, we don't know what you're doing, but we want you to do it again next year. So, you know, they're having, they're seeing how well it works because of how the, the stations uh, work on there. And they're used, like I said, they've, they, like I said, they've got things built into their system and budgets and trucks and people and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's not like they want to have people do something, you know, for no reason but they do have a system that they've got to, got to work uh, around. So we're getting some use in there, but they're, they're still the mass majority of what they're doing is, like I said, the spraying of the, the malathions and the, um, um, the organophosphates and things like this to, to control, control mosquitoes. So in a residential setting, considering homeowners can't buy the into cares on their own, are PMPs able to do community-wide work? Like, if, for example, are they working with HOAs to try to get a community-based program in place where maybe vector control isn't the one who's coming into an area and, and doing this in a residential setting? Have you seen work with H HOAs? Yeah, we've seen some of that. It's not as much as I would like, but I, I think this year it's going to really pick up. Um, in fact, we've already had a couple of questions from HOAs come into me uh, on this or that, and, and a couple of pest control uh, operators, uh, PMPs, uh, asking me, you know, how should I bid this or how should you do this? The HOA is now interested because of the green and they're kind of hearing it works or they're seeing it online and are fascinated with the concept. 
So we're starting to see more and more of that. But uh, yeah, HOA and presenting this as an HOA, I did an HOA meeting last year uh, online and uh, you know verbally. But uh, uh, I um, I was explaining to them, and uh, they were they were absolutely fascinated. Now, whether the board would go for that HOA board would go for that because it is a little bit more expensive for an HOA to do something as a group than have almost say, look, do it yourself and hire a pest control company, things like that. So I haven't uh, gotten that one yet, but uh, I think that will probably come around. And I think a lot of the focus with IntuCare has been in residential, but I know when IntuCare was first coming out, the hotels in the Caribbean were really mm -hmm. wanting to, you know, to, to use this for their settings because the last thing they want are, you know, these breakouts in their countries, you know, because in the Caribbean, dengue and chikungunya is much more of an issue in the Caribbean and a lot of people can go there and get it while they're traveling and come back home and bring it back home. Are you seeing a lot of commercial facilities using the into cares in the U S not in, in, in the U S a few uh, on there. So I think there's an opportunity, but I don't think it's been exploited yet. And that's my personal opinion, but uh, because it's ideal, we've had one, one had a campus that the people were going out for lunch and things like this. And they have kind of this nice green campus, but they were complaining that the, uh, the 80s were, were, were eating them up. So they used, so we, we've got a few situations where they are using it, but I think it's, it, the fact is that we're not getting more. It's the vast majority, of, you know, 90, 95% of it or, or more is residential, but we are starting to move up a little bit more in the commercial opportunities. We did, we did work in the hotels and, and especially in Aruba, Curacao, and, and Aruba and uh, Bonaire, uh, Ruben and Curacao, and they, they practically blanketed the islands, the hotels and some of the residents blanketed the islands with the into care. It was very successful. They knocked, they, they knocked down almost, almost completely knocked out the 80s mosquitoes, and they set a huge drop in the, the Culex mosquitoes. They were very, very happy with the results. So it was surrounded by water, you know, kind of, kind of um, islands, so there's not a whole lot coming off from the ocean, anything coming off from the ocean. So they were able to get good, good results because of the, uh, the isolated uh, way that the, uh, the islands were. You can get that campus, a large enough campus or commercial facility, things like that, where they got busy streets around them. You can get pretty good, pretty good control. Yeah, because I would think, um, you know, even hotels in, you know, in Florida, you know, California, Texas, anywhere that has a high, you know, they have a lot of biting, you know, by poolside, mm -hmm. even if it's not the disease transmission, would like to have their customers be more comfortable. Um, and even hospitals or, you know, nursing facilities, nursing homes or daycares where they don't want, you know, the, the children or the patients getting bitten up constantly. I think those would be really good opportunities. And I was just wondering how we were seeing that on our end on, in the in the States. I, I know we have a few uh, of those, but I, I couldn't uh, tell you, I couldn't quantify it because I've been uh, you know, dealing mostly with the homeowners and the PMPs, dealing with homeowners, things like this. But I know we've had a few, a couple in Florida that have gone through this and um, done a pretty good job of it. So uh, hopefully that will grow. Okay, well, that's all I have to ask you today, Ted. Do you have anything you want to add about the Into no, Care? No, I think uh, I appreciate it. I know that Into Care is uh, uh, the one thing I do want to say, I do have something to add is, there is a lot of good information on into care uh, on there. We have four good videos, four or five good videos. One that explains how it works. One that you get kind of a video that can be shown to homeowners in the sales process. We have uh, showing how the principle behind it uh, and, and, and how the, uh, the electrostatic works with the pyroprox from the Bavaria. And then, anyway, so we have several good videos on the site. We have sales literature, door hangers, things like this test data, testimonials, and we even have information on if the, if the control operator or the PMP decides to use this, we have question and answers of all the questions the homeowner is going to ask you or your staff or your customer service folks and the answers to those questions. So there's a lot of support that we've given uh, through, you know, through our site, uh, which, which is www.intocare.org. Uh, uh, forward slash marketing. So that's the site uh, that you can go and get, get all that information. And, and you can also get through the site information through the Versera uh, site also.
So, and, and, and one other question, the reason that we, we go through Viserys, we're very happy with Viserys, is one, this thing to use. It's, it's, it's not like going out there flipping on the sprayer, and I don't want to downplay misting because there's some knowledge and training that has to be done for that. But this is a little different process. So Viserys has a training module and a, a, uh, uh, to, to get approved to be able to use this. We use Viserys because it's, it's traditionally known for its training and its education. And then we also want to make sure the homeowners, this doesn't have fun line and the homeowners don't get it. And Viserys can make sure it goes just to pest control company or people licensed or qualified to use it. So that's a couple of reasons that we're really happy to run through Viserys and they've done a, a very good job of stewarding this program. Thank you, Ted. We know a growing number of PMPs are finding the Intucare system to be an essential part of their mosquito control service offering, particularly among residential customers. We are proud to be exclusive distributors of the Intucare unit. To learn more about this and other products to grow your business, visit us at pestweb.com. Thanks for listening to the PestWeb podcast. If you enjoyed the show, subscribe today. And don't forget to share this episode with other pest control professionals. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.